are talking with Need to Breathe. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. I, I know this is kind of weird, but I noticed that Justin is kind of dressed like you, Bear. I, I don't know. <laughs> he is. It, I've what noticed that too. Here. It's a um, little weird. I wanted to do my my best need to breathe impersonation today. Yeah. Oh, weird. you did it. It's yeah. Weird. You nailed it. I got the hat and the <laughs> denim, and I thought, you know, uh, I know last time we spoke, there were more of you, so you've got a spot open. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking. Uh, we, we yeah. could fill that spot today. He can play okay. the spoons really well. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and do your... I can do those oo oohs really well. Yeah. Yeah. What you got? What you got? Let's hear it. We're <laughs> in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty great. Oh man, I love it, uh, guys. Thanks so much for taking time with us. Uh, what What has COVID life been like for you guys? I think it, I've got two little kids, so five and two, they're, they are a lot and they're up early. Uh, <laughs> so this is the first kind of like total shift of schedules I've ever had. So I'm up at six in the morning um, doing that deal. But it's been it's been great for me. It's been it's been a really creative time, but also kind of a blessing. Just it, we haven't been off the road in so long, probably 10 years or so. So it's nice um, to connect with the family in that way. Um, I'm also realizing I'm going to be very thankful when we can go back on the road. <laughs> Yeah, I keep going downstairs to the kitchen looking at like we're looking for catering signs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, I like, okay, you need to get back on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a really um, serious and important question. Do your wives let you load the dishwasher? Mine, yeah. mine will let me certainly as much as I'll do it for sure. <laughs> Yeah, let, let me or force me to. Right. Okay. All right. Because <laughs> I feel like most people are like, don't even touch it. I'm just going to reload it anyway. That's true. There are certain things. <clears throat> I don't fold the towels correctly. I've learned uh. that. <laughs> so I'm actually quarantining with my mother-in-law. And oh, I'm glad fun. you brought up the dishwashing thing because she has, she's a, a pre-rinser. You know, oh, you basically yeah. like wash the dish, then you put it in the dishwasher. That's not how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some conversations about that. If it needs to be pre-rinsed, it needs to be thrown away. Yeah. That's what I was Come on now. That's right. What is a dishwasher for if I got to wash it before I put it in there? Yeah, I mean. Mm -hmm. Let's jump into uh, what, you're, what you guys do in Nicaragua and Uganda with the medical clinics. How has that been affected by COVID? It's been interesting. Yeah, there's been some events that we obviously haven't been able to do. A golf tournament that we always do every year, which is a big fundraiser for them. And, and um it's been cool. They, they, the clinics have stayed open, um, which is great, and, and are obviously there for, for times like this especially. Um, so the, everything's still going with that, and we're kind of coming up with some creative ways to do um, some concerts for the charity this fall. Um, so we're excited about that. It'll be, it'll be good to get back to that for sure. So they're also operating and, and they're able to see patients and, and, and going, going yeah. well. Yeah. And they're actually, you know, they've been very useful. They, they've, the, the way they work, they're, they're kind of like urgent cares almost anyway. Mm -hmm. So they're able to kind of move and, and, you know, have a place where they can see COVID patients. And, and, um, so it's been really, I think a blessing for those communities for sure. Now I would think if you're going to have to quarantine, the best place would be in one of, uh, Seth's tree houses. So, um, <laughs> Are you guys still, are they still operating or are people still, I mean, they're gorgeous. I follow you guys on Instagram. And it is in the middle of nowhere. So like you're socially yeah. distant, right? It's the perfect place to be. My right. wife and I lived in them for like two years. So, uh, we were like, Hey, we've been quarantining this whole time. And didn't realize it. <laughs> for people yeah, who don't know, open. you own and, and built luxury tree houses in South Carolina. Yeah, that's right. My um, my dad's a builder, and so I grew up working construction, and um, I built the first treehouse with my dad for uh, my wife and I's wedding and honeymoon. And then we put it on Airbnb. People loved it, and we decided to, to build more. And we just recently, because of COVID, switched over to, to offering monthly stays so that people have a place they can go for a while, safe for, for, uh, for COVID, and, and still be able to get outside in case they're You've been cooped up for months like most of us. Come yeah, on, man. That's awesome. Sounds so much better than my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to look at in there, man. It's beautiful out there. I've seen pictures. It's great. And you should book one on Airbnb. Go check it out. <laughs> so, Josh, what has it been like for you being home with kids? And uh, I know, you know, you guys are on the night end of things, and now you're having to get up early. Yeah. No, it, it's been, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's good and challenging, I guess. Like, I, <laughs> 
I feel like when we're on tour, I'll stay up. You know, we, we play a show at 930 at night and then we'll go to bed at two, three, maybe, and then sleep, you know, until whenever, you mm -hmm. know, until nine that next night. But, um, <laughs> but no, yeah, with the, with the kids, there's just no that schedule is has been out the window for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, and so for the first time in probably 10 years, I'm seeing, you know, six thirty, seven 7 o'clock in the morning and, and I'm trying to get in bed by, you know, before the evening news comes on and all that stuff. So, but it's been, I mean, it has been really, um, you know, I think a lot of people, uh, some friends of mine and just a lot of people you see uh, talking about it, it's used to forced break in some ways. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are using it as time to just stop and, mm -hmm. and get some reflection and, and take some stock in what, you know, what's important and some of the things that we've been, you know, as, you know, just people that work really hard, just some of the things that you put a lot of time into, you just being able to, to stop and, you know, sit down on the floor, play with your kids and, yeah. and you know, really spend quality time. Because a lot of times you wake up in the morning like, well, what are we doing today? Yeah, we did yesterday. So it's it's been that part of it has been really rewarding, and to be able to be there for them um, during this time has been has been pretty sweet. Well, one exciting thing that that man, not only am I excited excited about, but so many others is brand new music from Need yeah. to Breathe. Uh, the new song going to radio is "Who Am I." What was the inspiration behind why you wrote it and why you decided to release it now? I think a lot of the record, really, the "Out of Body" is the name of the record, um, is about some of the things we've gone through in the last year, um, not the pandemic necessarily, but more personal things and, and anxiety and stuff that I, I struggle with. I, you know, um, I feel like a lot of rooms I walk into, I'm not, I'm not, I don't deserve to be there. I'm not worthy of it. Um, I think that's a probably common thing with a lot of people. And I think there's probably a lot more love around than we think. And, you know, I tell my kids, I'm like, we'll love you forever, no matter what you do. And they sort of can sort of accept that, I think, at this point. It's harder for me. Um, mm. And I, I think that's what the song is about. It's kind of a reminder of, man, how amazing is it that we are loved despite what we do? Um, but also, uh, you know, that we are loved and, and we can lean on that. Man, that's so interesting to hear that from someone like you, the lead singer of Need to Breathe, going, I walk into a room and I don't know how to accept the love of others. That's, you would think, at least the perception would be, that someone in your position wouldn't wouldn't deal with those issues but we all do right I, I think definitely I think um, you know obviously everybody in a lot of different ways too I think mine has always been even any friends I have know me personally know I'm kind of a quiet guy really um, pretty shy and so they see when they see the band play they're like that that, that does not compute those two people <laughs> um, so I think when it you know there's a lot of situations that are really sort of uh, I've always been sort of tough for me I'm working on and um, yeah, and I think it's a contrast to you see your kids, you know, that have just absolutely no anxiety or fear, you know, really. It might, mm -hmm. Maybe it's some scary movie or something, but they're like, they just walk into the room just themselves fully. And I think for me, that was something that I really wanted the record to reflect of like, man, that's really where we want to be more often. One of my favorite lyrics in the song is, you grow your roses on my barren soul, man. That's just like... That's mm -hmm. great poetry right there, and it just it <laughs> Thanks, it, it speaks a lot to what you're what you're talking about now. Yeah, man, I think I think that's something that as we've done this longer, you kind of learn to appreciate the the darker down times. I mean, I think I've I've heard it said, you know, there's there's as much grace in the death as there is the resurrection. And I think I think that's something that's hard to embrace. You always just want to be at the end of the story. You grow much for just spending a few minutes with us today and uh, we are both big fans yeah and this is a real treat to get to chat with you guys can't wait today. for you to come back to st louis when yeah. all this is over and you're able to tour again no doubt can't wait to be back. all right guys Thank we'll see you, you then so much.